Hello everyone, it's your host, your friend, your boy, Jetbike One Only, here with another exciting video. Uh, before I start today's video, I'm gonna go on a quick rant. Uh, so this Newsarama article that you guys see on screen is from 2017. Um, it's like right as Dark Knight's Metal is becoming like a big thing, and they're interviewing Scott Snyder, one of the writers for Dark Knight's Metal, and um, they're talking about how the DC Universe, according to current continuity, has 52 different parallel Earths. And if you saw my video, how many universes are in the DC Comics multiverse, then you know that there are an infinite number of parallel Earths because at the end of Convergence, um, they undid the events of Crisis on Infinite Earths, so now there are an infinite number of universes. I just thought it was funny that this Newsarama article that came out two years after Convergence says that according to current t continuity, that there are 52 Earths, but it shows the image from Convergence. This image right here is from Convergence, and it's the image they show right after they go back in time and prevent Crisis on Infinite Earths. So the whole purpose of this image right here in its original context is to illustrate that there is now an infinite multiverse instead of a multiverse with 52 Earths. But it's being used here as a way for the article to say that there are 52 different parallel Earths in current continuity, which I think is wild. I don't know why they like use this image from Convergence, credited that it was from Convergence, and nobody like read it. No, <laughs> the the like caption on this image, you guys can like barely read it, but it says they have done it. It's supposed to be commenting on like the time travelers, like they did it. They stopped Crisis on Infinite Earths or whatever. They're back now. All the universes are back. But whatever, whatever, it doesn't matter. Let's jump back in and start talking about today's actual topic. Hope and fear are literal superpowers in the DC Comics universe. And I'm not just talking about Yellow Lanterns. I'm not just talking about Blue Lanterns. They are going to come up, though, because they're super relevant. I'm actually talking more about the Dark Multiverse, which, real quick, I'm going to have to do another rant another rant about the dark multiverse because it's the perfect time for me to get these rants out of my system so as i mentioned before dc comics since 2015 has had an infinite multiverse and they have the ability to tell stories about the infinite number of earths that are in their multiverse but they don't do that they always just tell stories about the 52 universes. But Dark Knight's Metal introduced this concept of the dark multiverse, where they're like, now we have this pool of worlds that we can tell stories about. But they had infinite worlds and have had infinite worlds since 2015. At the time that they were doing Dark Knight's Metal, it had only been two years since Convergence. Two years. And they're like, Hmm, I don't know, we can't just work with 52. Gotta, gotta make a new multiverse. And I guess what's even weirder about it is when you think about like what infinite means, it means that there's like literally any like world you could imagine being in the DC Comics multiverse just does. And then they're like, hmm, we're gonna create the dark multiverse which essentially would just be redundant because every world that would be in the dark multiverse would just be in the bigger infinite multiverse as well, or a world that would be very similar to all of them. It's just stupid. That's, that's the point. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyways, back to the topic at hand. Hope and fear are literal superpowers in the DC Comics universe. So let's talk about how hope and fear our literal superpowers. But to do that, we gotta talk about Dark Knight's Metal a little bit. Scott Snyder, a writer for Dark Knight's Metal, has this quote in this Newsarama article, where he says, The known DC multiverse, the 52 universes, are a place where worlds are real. Uh, they are set and stable and fixed. But the Dark Multiverse isn't stable at all. 
It's like an oceanic subconscious of all reality in the way that anything you fear and hope for materializes as this kind of fluid, isotropic world there for a moment. Excuse me. And when you stop fearing it, it goes away and bubbles down. Now you may be like, what does that mean? That means anything that you're afraid of or anything that you're hopeful for materializes as an entire world. A whole world comes into being in the dark multiverse just from you being fearful or hopeful about something. And then as soon as you stop fearing that thing or stop hoping for that thing, that universe, that world goes away. So the dark multiverse is weirder than, than what I would have originally thought. And because it's not just that they have like this redundant, like second multiverse, even though they already have infinite universes, it's that they now have it where people just make universes. You just make universes whenever you hope or fear for anything. And as soon as you stop hoping for something or you stop fearing something, they go away. I think the hope aspect of it is the craziest part. Hoping for something. You can hope for shit. You can hope for anything. I mean, think about it like this. You're a character in the DC multiverse, which technically you are. Fun fact, there's a whole earth on the DC multiverse map that's just supposed to be the real world. So technically you are in the DC multiverse based on their own rules, but whatever. Um, so you are in the DC multiverse and you hope that like some superhero is going to come from the dark multiverse, a superhero that you imagined and will save you. And you're like, this superhero has the power to travel between universes. And you may be like, travel between you. That seems kind of far fetched. Not really. Uh, there's actually a character that was introduced um, after Dark Knight's Metal, or like around the time of Dark Knight's Metal, and his whole thing is that he creates rifts, like these portals that he uses in order to travel between different universes. His design was very similar to Spider-Man, but his name escapes me. But hear me out. They, they did a big push for this guy as being like one of the next big thing characters. Nothing really happened with him. Just like nothing happened with DC's infinite multiverse. But whatever. So there's already a precedent in DC for you to be able to like travel between the dark multiverse and the normal universe if you have the power for it. Like if you have the ability to do it, then you can do it. So if you just hoped for a hero that you made up to like come into being in the dark multiverse and then travel into your universe to save you, it would just happen because that's literally how it works from the writer's mouth. I quote, in the way that anything you fear and hope for materializes in the way that anything you fear and hope for materializes as this kind of fluid, isotropic world there for a moment. And when you stop fearing it, it goes away and bubbles down. So, you guys may be like, whatever. You know, that doesn't matter. That really matters. That matters a lot. Because all it requires is for you to know how the dark multiverse works within, like, continuity. Like, all it takes is, like, self-awareness for them to be able to do it. And you may be like, well, they're not going to be self-aware. How is anybody going to know that that's how, like, the dark multiverse works? Well, believe it or not, right under this quote from Scott Snyder where he talks about it, there's actually a narration from uh, the Red Death, which is like an evil Batman from the Dark Multiverse who's like the Flash, who says, 
Every fear, each bad decision, gives birth to a malformed world of nightmare, a world that shouldn't exist. And desperate as it fights to survive in the light of the true multiverse far above, these worlds are doomed to rot apart and die because they're wrong at their core. So the Red Death, this evil Batman, just already has this understanding of what the Dark Multiverse is. So there are already characters within like comic continuity who understand how it works, at least from the perspective of fear. But then if you take this further, right? If you understood it from the perspective of hope, you could literally just start doing whatever you wanted. You could just start making up characters that have their own like powers and abilities and skill sets or whatever, hope for them to do something for you, and it just happens. You just get that thing. You, I, I don't know a better way to explain it. I wish I remembered the guy who has the power to kind of like slide or rift between different like dark multiverse universes. I'm trying to remember his name. I'm going to look him up. Dark multiverse traveling superhero. He looks so much like Spider-Man, if I can remember who he is. Sideways! That's his name. Okay, got me. Sideways. DC. Yeah, this guy. That's like his whole thing, is that he can travel, like, between worlds. So he can, like, go from our world to the dark multiverse, and that's like the thing that he does. So, yeah, a matter of fact, Sideways is really broken when you think about him like that, right? Sideways could hope that there's a world that's just however he wants it to be, right? And then he could go there. He could make one of these little rift things and he could just travel to that world that he imagined and just be a thing. Because hopes and fears, you don't have to fear or hope for real things. But once you know that the dark multiverse is real and that hoping for fake things is actually real, then you are hoping for real things. So it's, it's just, it's so broken. Now there are other ways that like hope and fear are superpowers as well. And I mentioned these earlier where I was talking about like the yellow lanterns and the blue lanterns. But real quick, I wanna talk about uh, Scarecrow. Scarecrow's big thing is that he makes like fear toxins. And it's like a chemical that makes you afraid. And there are like different variations of the fear toxin and stuff like that. But the concept of like fear science is like a bigger deal when it literally lets you manifest universes. Universes that continue to persist as long as you continue to fear or hope for them to continue to exist. So like... Scarecrow could make a toxin that makes everyone afraid of a dark multiverse world where there are a whole army of scarecrows and they all have sideways powers so they can all create rifts to travel to the normal universe. So Scarecrow disperses this gas. Tons of people start having the same fear to help like sustain this like earth. And then you just have armies of scarecrows just like coming through to our reality. And the only way to stop them would be to like cure everybody of the effects of the fear toxin. Like this sounds like a really weird plot, but it makes sense within like the rules of the current DC dark multiverse. It's, just, it's either fear or hope. And you don't have to be like scarecrow and do it with like fear toxin or whatever. You could be a member of the Sinestro Corps, where their whole thing is they're like Green Lanterns, but instead of willpower, it's fear. So you use the power of fear and just be like, Bink, you are now, like, afraid of a world where I'm all and have sideways powers. <laughs> you always gotta add in that part where, <laughs> where they, they can also come here. And then boom, it's just over. It feels weird. It feels weird. I don't know. 
but I'm not done. Because you also have the blue lanterns. And the blue lanterns are like the same thing, but it's like hope. So it's like, oh, they can like make you hope for something or whatever, right? And then create that world. And they can, like their whole thing is that they're like really strong with like hope. They're like very hopeful people. Like the difference between the blue lanterns and the yellow lanterns when talking about the dark multiverse, the Sinestro Corps is more about like, we inspire fear in other people. It's not that like we're scared of everything, like that we're super frightened, but more that we can frighten others. We inspire fear in others, right? But the blue lanterns just straight up are just like, we're super hopeful. You know, we can hope for like anything, all will be well kind of thing. If you have really strong hope, then you should be able to maintain a world in the dark multiverse for as long as you want, right? Like Saint Walker, he's like the leader of like the Blue Lantern Corps. If he hopes for a better world, that better world that he's hoping for just exists. It just does exist in the dark multiverse. And if he wanted to travel there, he would just need to hope for there to be a sideways style being who could open a rift or whatever and allow him to like travel through and that would just be a real thing and as long as he held on to those hopes he just could just keep doing it i mean the sinestro core they could probably use their like fear powers on themselves right make yourself fearful of a world but the difficulty is that if you want the world to exist right why would you be afraid of it? Like hope actually seems like the best way to create a world in the dark multiverse. Because if you're afraid of the world, you're not gonna want it to exist. But if you're hopeful for the world, I feel like it's really easy to maintain that hope, especially when you know that it's just like a real thing. It becomes like a faith kind of thing, where it's like, I know that through my hope, it's what makes that world real and makes it persist. And you at the very least would hope that it continues to persist. Like it's one of those things. I think the hope angle is like the really like powerful angle, like for the dark multiverse thing. It also essentially just makes like really imaginative, really hopeful characters in the DC universe are essentially just gods. You know, like, if you wanted to dream up a universe, it's just, like, a real thing. And as long as you make sure to throw in some sideways people in your, like, imagined hope universe, then you, you're good. You can travel back and forth. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can hope that you're the leader of that world. So that people from that world specifically will be like, we want them here. They got to lead. It's literally whatever you want. It's, like, free real estate. Literally, like, multiversal real estate. There's another way to look at the, like, hope is a superpower thing. Uh, so this is a panel from Dial H for Hero, issue number five. And essentially, they're talking about the concept of what, like, a secret origin is. Like, the tipping point between someone, like, becoming a villain or becoming a hero. And they're talking about this reality called the Heroverse. The Heroverse exists outside of the bleed which is like outside of the multiverse, whatever. It's like another one of these alternate reality spaces. And essentially, whenever someone becomes like a hero or a villain, they tap into the hero verse. And when you initially tap into the hero verse and unlock its power, it's called your secret origin. But it, they essentially say, um, and it's down here, that's the split second you connect to the hero verse. When you despair, you connect to the dark side. And when you hope, you connect to the, of course, like the light side, the like whole good and evil duality. But it's like literally connecting to hope, like connects you to this alternate reality, the hero verse, where you can tap into like the special power in the H dial, in the DC Comics, like, multiverse or whatever, is this device that allows you to turn into different superheroes 
when you um when you dial hero i don't know why i had like a brain fart i couldn't remember that the hero dot you dial hero on it anyways so that's literally like a method of turning into a superhero is just tapping into hope it's tapping into hope is a superhero thing and the villain thing is tapping into despair similar not the same thing as fear like, really hope is the big superpower but fear is too it's just hope is just better <laughs> I, I don't know what to say because it's not like fear doesn't let you create universes it just doesn't seem useful unless you're doing the scarecrow approach that i mentioned earlier where it's like you're making people scared of the world that you want because then you do get what you want, but you have to like power it off of like other people's fear is the idea there. Um, but gosh, there's so much, there's so much going on. Oh, also to reinforce what I was saying about the dial thing earlier, uh, they say it in the comic. I'm trying to figure out where they say it. So he talks about how when you believe in yourself, when you have that feeling that makes you bigger than you are, that rush you get when your heart fills with courage, 10 people of your soul connects you to the hero verse, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but that's what makes the H dial an elegant innovation, a device capable of instantly delivering a controlled spark of the hero verse. So we already know that you connect through the hero verse through hope, because they just straight up say it like at the part that I showed you before. So all the like H dial really does is just connect you to the hero for it. It's like sh giving you that hope. It's weird. Hope is a superpower. Hope, I've already said it. Hope is a superpower. Fear is a superpower in the DC Comics multiverse. And it also connects you to the dark multiverse and allows you to create your own universes. And it also connects you to the hero verse and can turn you into a hero or a villain. And if you have like a ton of hope or fear, you can also join one of these cores, these lantern cores, where you get superpowers from having a lot of fear. Well, you get superpowers from inspiring a lot of fear in others for the yellow lantern core. And you get superpowers if you have a lot of hope uh, for the blue lantern core as well. So there are multiple ways where hope and fear give you powers. You either join a lantern core or you create universes in the dark multiverse, which is free. You can very easily do that. Or you connect to the hero verse, which technically you do just by hoping, actually. I mean, the hero verse, you can argue, is like hope at a particular moment. It's like your secret origin is not when you get your powers or when you make a big discovery. Your secret origin is the moment that you decide what to do about it. So essentially you would get your secret origin in the DC Comics universe, I think when you discovered how the dark multiverse thing worked, because you'd realize that you had the power in order to like create worlds with your hopes and fears. And then it would be based on like how you reacted. If you reacted in despair, that whenever you feared something, it created like a horrible world, you might connect to the hero verse and unlock like villainous power. Like that might be your villain origin. Or you'll connect to the hero verse and you'll be like, oh man, I feel so hopeful because my hopes will manifest all these like amazing worlds. And then that's like your hero moment and that's how you get powers. But like straight up, hope and fear and despair these like normal ass things that anybody can do are abilities in the DC Comics universe through all these different methods. Lantern rings, dark multiverse, H dial, hero verse. Excuse me. But remember, if you ever get transported into the DC Comics multiverse, I need you to remember this one thing. Make sure that the universes that you hope and fear for, well, not the ones you fear for, the ones that you hope for, make sure that those have a sideways character who really fucks with you.
That's the that's the secret. Anyways, thank you all for watching. If you guys like this video, make sure to smash that like button, favorite, comment, subscribe, and ding ding ding, ring the notification bell to be notified whenever we do these videos. If you search for new boy, Jeff like one only logging out. Peace. Make sure you guys check out my video, These Superheroes Do Not Exist. It's uh, for a project that I'm working on with John Mason. Peace.